today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to create a parallaxing effect using a perspective camera. So the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and just show this off. We're using a, an orthographic camera right now, and my grass is too deep. <laughs> but take note, everything, everything's pretty flat. It's orthographic, and for the way orthographic cameras work, if we take a look at it, the big box that it projects, and everything in it is just flat. As far as what shows up on top of one another, it's completely done through the sorting layers. And we've covered sorting layers already in another video. I'll go ahead and link to that if you need it. But if you were to go ahead and take, uh, let's take this volcano layer and move it behind this background layer, it still shows up in front of it because of the sorting layers. So if the sorting layers say what shows up on top of each other, why do we have them spread out like this? Well, for me personally, I like this workflow because it allows me to quickly get to specific layers, even when I'm just working strictly in 2D. But the other benefit is being able to go ahead and take my camera, switch it over to a perspective view, which of course brings us to that cone one. And now we have the ability to see depth in our scene. So again, if I go ahead and grab that volcano layer, I move it behind, you see how it moves in the background? Now, even though it's behind my blue sky, we still see it because remember, what shows up on top of each other is completely dictated by the sorting layer. But as we move things forward and backwards now, they actually change size. They'll get smaller as they move away. They have that perspective tool. And just to quickly demonstrate that again, I want to come back to the orthographic camera. Take that mountain layer. Whoops, wrong one. I want a one. And as we move that back, notice it stays the same size. It doesn't even look like we're moving it. But if we went ahead and moved it on the X, you could see it move then. Great, so hopefully you understand that. If not, let me know down below in the comments if you need a better explanation. I'm gonna switch back to that perspective view. Now, depending on how you have your scene set up, you might have to go ahead and reposition your camera. But for now, I would go ahead and leave that field of view at 60. And let's take a look at the game now using a perspective camera. Notice how the background moves slower than the foreground. And right here's a good example, although it's kind of ugly. This tree is on a further layer than the background, so it's going to move slower than the background itself. So as I move, you notice the background, this little patch of dirt here is moving faster than that tree. Even though that tree, if we went ahead and clicked on it, is on a layer back further than, the, than that, that clump of dirt. Now that's one of the things you're gonna to have to pay attention to with stacking layers like this. The things that are closer into the foreground are gonna move faster. So make sure if you are actually putting them in front of something else that they are on a closer layer as far as the, the Z depth goes right here. Or it's gonna look really weird. <laughs> Now you could even go ahead and put things in front of your character. I'm gonna go and take the tree layer. I'm just gonna duplicate it and we'll change the name just so it's easier to see. I'll call it foreground trees. And let's get rid of that one at the end. I'm gonna open it up, switch it all over to the foreground layer. So now it all gets rendered in front of everything else because my main layer that I'm running on is usually the default. That's usually what I set it on. That's the same thing as my player. But again, all this is linked into the sorting layer video. I'm gonna take those foreground trees. I guess we should move them a bit so they're not exactly on the same spot. I'm gonna move them down, move them this way a bit. And I'm actually going to grab them all inside of here and scale them down a bit. Uh, let's do 0 0.75 by 0 0.75. And they're all sprites, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave them there. Uh, I think I want them a little bit smaller. That's probably too small. I want to be able to see past them. And of course, these vines are are mixed up. But anyway, what I want to get at is I'm going to move this up pretty close to the camera. 
start my game up. And there we go. Look how much faster they move. Now, I apparently should move them down a little bit more, but I don't intend to keep them there anyway. But you could go and have maybe some flowers, some small bushes. You generally don't want to obstruct the view too much. Maybe the entrance to a cave, then when they get to the cave, you switch over to a cave background, but you have that entrance of the cave to kind of obstruct the changing to it. But this video was not on level design. <laughs> it was on parallaxing with perspective camera. But yeah, that's all there really is to it. Now this way here, you do get a lot more control over how your level looks, but it takes a lot more work. You've got to sit down, position each piece where you want it. You have to take note that because of the perspective camera, you're going to have to scale some things differently. And as you're building out your level, you're going to constantly tinkering with the spacing in between your layers. But as I said before, it does give you a lot more control compared to just having a scrolling texture in the background. Now, to be fair with the scrolling texture, you could have multiple textures and just have the other textures have transparencies and have them scroll at different speeds. But you are still getting the same image over and over and over again. With this here, you can really mix it up. Sure, I just went ahead and downloaded a pre-built scene, made some modifications, copy-pasted stuff. But as you can see, you can literally hand make your level all by yourself. But anyway, which way do you like better? Do you like being able to hand place everything all by yourself? Or do you just prefer the simplicity of going ahead and grabbing a couple textures, throwing them on a, a plane, and just having them scroll? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.